Okay, I want to read a thing I've never read before in, in, um, in a public setting um, because it's Mount Holyoke. Well, <laughs> yeah, well, you'll, wait till I read it and then you'll think, ah, uh, now, I, now I see why. <laughs> So this is a piece from She's Not There, and it's, it's, it, it's um, at this point, I'm, I'm rather late in my transition, um, and I'm, I'm, I'm testing the waters of what it's like to be a woman in this culture. And it's right around the time Katie Finney, in fact, took me to Northampton, although this isn't about that. But uh, there are a number of things that I did that just kind of freaked me out, even though they weren't a surprise to me. As a man, of course, I was a feminist then. But still, here's tonight's duh statement, it's different when it's you. So, so this is about buying a pair of blue jeans. You still want me to read it? Yeah, ready? <laughs> what I found in the gap was what most women know already, that buying clothes is complicated. As a man, of course, you simply made the choice between the regular fit or the relaxed fit. You tell the salesman the measure of your inseam and your waist, and then they lead you to this huge wall of pants, all in your size all of which you know will fit just fine, even if you never try them on. As a woman, I found that there were six different styles of jean, from the boot cut to the reverse cut, and that the sizes bore no relation to any known system of measure. You know what I mean? Like, if, if, as a man, you, like, you go in there, okay, my waist is 34, and my, my inseam is, 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 is 33, and I'm like, okay, 34, 33, here are your pants, sir. <laughs> as a woman, you go in there, and they're like, they say, what size are you? I'm like, well, I'm a 30, 33. No. Well, I'm a 12. And you think to yourself, 12 what? <laughs> it's not inches. <laughs> Acres? cubic feet, <laughs> ounces. The jean that fit me best at the gap was called the reverse, which, you know, I thought was appropriate. <laughs> I was right between a, between a 10 and a 12 and spent some time neurotically trying to tell myself I could get by in the 10s. They're perfectly comfortable if I don't sit down. <laughs> I thought, how much time do I actually spend sitting down anyway? Ready for this? If I buy the tens, it will be an incentive to lose weight. <laughs> I recognized the insanity of this kind of talk, recognized it from the lives of the women I knew and loved, and as I moved into this territory, I realized, and not for the first time, that all of the cruel expectations that society puts on women, and which so many women put upon themselves, were now falling on my shoulders. I'd seen so many transsexual women who felt that being a woman was the same as being a girl. And the lives that they lived post-transition seemed to me to be those of completely unapologetic pre-feminists. So many former transsexuals, although now ostensibly female, spoke in these odd falsettos, teetered around on heels, and demanded that doors be held open for them. Again and again, I told myself, Jenny, you're going to such incredible effort to become a woman. Don't surrender your common sense in the bargain. No issue was as hard for me to resolve as the issues around food. My weight was stable. At 5 foot 11, I was healthy, tall, slender. But whenever I went out for lunch, I'd hear myself ordering diet soda or asking for the spinach salad. I bought a scale. I started weighing myself all the time. I'd say, if I could only lose five pounds, I bought Slim Fast and had thick, gloopy milkshakes for lunch instead of actual food. It was madness. It was exactly the kind of madness I found least appealing in the lives of the women that I loved. And yet, the culture had its hooks in me. Like it or not, in no time at all, I'd internalized many of the things which I'd spent years imploring my students to fight against. I worried I was too fat. I apologized when someone stepped on my foot, as if it was my fault. <laughs> my sentences often ended with a question, as if I were unsure of myself. <laughs> All of these changes kind of happened without any conscious thought, and if I became aware of them, I felt ashamed of myself. I think partially what I wanted was to belong. 
if being female to others at any rate seemed to include self-doubt, insecurity, and anorexia, some part of me thought, yeah, okay, well, let's do all that. Later, when I tried to let some of this go, there were some friends of mine who saw me as so supposedly less female, like when I ordered the barbecued baby back ribs for lunch instead of a salad and a diet soda. Why shouldn't a woman eat real food for lunch, I wondered, instead of the pretend kind? <laughs> I realized, as Jimmy Durante used to say, them's the conditions what prevails. But it didn't sit well with me. There were times when it was as if I were trying to prove to people I was truly female by oppressing myself.